Well, uh, of course, uh, we're going to be talking to the minister just after 7 p.m. this evening to try and get some answers uh, to those problems that have been raised. A really big stain on what has been otherwise uh, a very good reputation for South African troops in terms of our peacekeeping efforts. Well, now, our UN correspondent, Sharon Bryce Pease, does join us from New York. And Sharon, South Africa's land reform program was, of course, front and center at the Bloomberg Global Business Forum today. And that's a conversation that was led by the former U.S. President Bill Clinton with President Ramaphosa. How was it framed? Well, we essentially had a friend in the room, uh, Bongani. Uh, President Bill Clinton, of course, has deep ties with uh, South Africa. Of course, a very good friend of former President uh, Nelson Mandela, whose legacy, uh, the heritage and example, has very much framed the way South Africa is tackling all the issues they're confronted with here at the United Nations, following, of course, the unveiling of that statue earlier this week and, of course, the Nelson Mandela Peace Summit. So uh, President uh, Ramaphosa channeling uh, the ideas of Nelson Mandela as he responded to the, the question about how South Africa was going to tackle this issue. Of course, this is a uh, global business forum. You have CEOs, you have very influential business people with uh, deep pockets in the room. And so uh, very much a concern for businesses how this is going to play out. And President Ramaphosa, very clear that this, there's, a historical, uh, uh, there's an historical peg to what they're trying to do in, in terms of redressing the imbalances that were left after the end of apartheid. He talked about about uh, um, uh, doing things the right way. Of course, uh, this has been a refrain of this president talking about the constitutionality of the process, that there will be no land invasions. These are, this is a direct quote. We're not going to see land invasions. So that's not going to happen. There is a parliamentary process involved. He talks about the 650,000 submissions that have been received in this process and uh, very much talking about the historical nature of this, this the, 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 uh, and the disparagement that uh, the land question has brought to the fore and how they hope to tackle that in the future. So very much a balanced uh, discussion and uh, certainly uh, some support there from Bill Clinton in the room who literally told investors that South Africa needs our help now uh, and that they should certainly not run for the hills. And of course, I'd imagine, Sharon, it's been a delicate balancing act for President Ramaphosa, splitting his obligations uh, between, of course, uh, his uh, UN uh, concerns and also making sure he's selling the message of a South Africa that's open for business to potential investors. Bongani and compliment, uh, complicating the lives of, uh, you know, the, the lowly journalists here. It's very difficult to get around New York these days. I mean, roads have been blocked off. You have heads of state. You know, President Donald Trump has just been chairing a meeting of heads of state of the UN Security Council. It's very difficult to navigate your way, you know, between the Plaza Hotel where the business forum is happening and the UN uh, the, uh, headquarters here on the east side of Manhattan. But yes, you're absolutely right. President Ramaphosa spoke at that business forum this morning and then was uh, whisked over with blue lights. Of course, we don't have that privilege uh, back to the United Nations to address uh, a, a tuberculosis high level meeting where uh, world leaders have gathered to recommit themselves to eradicating tuberculosis by 2030. Uh, President Ramaphosa spoke of, uh, a short time ago and he emphasized the the need for drug companies to come to the table. Essentially, uh, we had the same problem when, we, when uh, all hands were on deck in terms of how we respond to high drug prices as it related to the HIV AIDS pandemic. So we're seeing a similar conversation now about tuberculosis. TB actually kills the most number of people in the world annually. Some between 1.5 and 1.7 million people every year. And so by 2030, President Ramaphosa has urged world leaders that they have to come back to the United Nations. Of course, this is the deadline for the Sustainable Development Goals and hopefully be able to make a statement that says TB is no longer with us. We have succeeded in this, in this cause. He talked about the importance of universal health care that will be fundamental to whether that will become a reality. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, drug prices need to come come down uh, and research needs to be funds need to be pumped into research there hasn't been the level of development in terms of t uh, TB medication uh, in the last 50 years so uh, a, a multi-prong approach here that, that that the South Africans are certainly trying to spearhead in terms of the tuberculosis debate here at the United Nations of course Joan you talk about how hard it is uh, to keep up President Trump as you say chaired that meeting of the Security Council I noticed uh, with some amusement that you tweeted he was 15 minutes late and kept everyone waiting and of course went off script attacking China no less 
I don't have a problem waiting for a president, but if you're making other presidents wait, I mean, essentially the Secretary General, the Secretary General is the busiest man in, at the United Nations in New York over this period. He has over 100 bilateral meetings. So when you see a Secretary General standing in the UN Security Council chamber with his hands in his pockets, looking around, essentially thinking, you know, I, I could be doing something else right now, but then having to be there because it is the United States president and he, you know, has the purse strings of the United States. They are the biggest funders towards peacekeeping. They are the biggest funders towards the regular budget of the of, of the UN uh, the operations of the United Nations so he couldn't leave the room uh, the president did arrive and of course uh, the focus of this meeting was non-proliferation so you would expect to hear about the DPRK you'd expect to hear about Iran you'd expect to hear about the use and uh, of, of uh, chemical weapons those were raised but the president at one point breaking off and talking about how China was trying to meddle in the midterm elections because they do not want to see their, his administration succeed. They do not want his administration to win in November because he's been the only president that has been tough on China in terms of the tariffs he's imposed and in terms of the trade imbalance as it relates between, as, uh, between Beijing and Washington. Uh, the Chinese foreign minister was in the room, Bongani, and uh, the cameras cut to him and he kind of shrugged his shoulders and coughed very uncomfortably. It was an uncomfortable moment, certainly, uh, if your uh, country is being mentioned uh, in that sense, uh, I imagine. All right, so, and we'll have to leave it there for the moment. We'll catch up with you a little later on this evening. Of course, that interview, we're looking forward uh, to the, your conversation with the Minister of Defence. And that, of course, uh, relates to uh, efforts by our peacekeepers in the DRC, uh, some troubling reports about sexual act exploitation and abuse there. So that interview coming up after 7 o'clock. Now, the South African Human Rights Committee,